a vast menu of options. Oh. What? Wait. What? <gasps> oh my god, I just blundered. Oh my fudge. I just oh my gosh. Should I really just do that? Rook H. Oh my gosh! What a move! I did it! Oh my god, he just turned it around! Waiting for the uh waiting for the next game to um Okay, here we go. Game starts. All right, away we go. Okay, stick to the basics, but I am going to change it a little bit because he, he came prepped with something silly last time. So I'm not going to play the exact same setup. Let me make sure this is correct. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's play E3. Play C5. Now I'm going to change it up. I played B3. I'm just going to change it up completely by playing D4 on move three. And now he's already out of his prep. So this is already a good start. Yeah, see, he, he prepped some silly long line, like 20 moves, and he's out of his prep. So, this is good. This is good. So, now we just play chess. Plays knight f6 here. So, he gives me b3 now. Um, I still think this is okay here. Because now on knight c6, what, what did he change? He changed some ordering. He changed an order when I did this last time. So I just, the opening is actually going to be very critical here. So I do need to be very, very careful. So he takes on d4, which is interesting. So I guess I'm going to take with a knight and go knight f3 back and play maybe like just bishop b2. Uh, Are you trusting this setup by Hikaru? I know you brought Yasser into the commentary equation, but Yasser would not be able to look at this position. I mean, Black has this, a... <laughs> what? This, we've seen some very dubious openings from the white side. First, Vladimir Fedoseyev. And both of Hikaru's openings, the one against Demchenko, I think was really good preparation by Anton. But here, Hikaru has clearly messed something up. After Knight C6, Vidim might be thinking, is this too good to be true? Uh, the answer is it's just great for black and okay minus 1.5 that seems extreme we like black's oh, yeah. position essentially you've had a free turn because you got to play e5 and that knight went knight f3 knight takes d4 knight back to f3 it's moved three times already and black yeah. will have full development will castle and the stronger center i feel like Vidit's, Vidit's a sort of guy who he's a little bit too theory centric he tries too hard to play perfect perfect theory in the opening instead of just playing on, on feel and intuition from time to time which i think is also why he, he kind of struggles that uh, struggles because when he gets out of the opening and he doesn't get the great position sometimes it just falls apart okay, he goes bishop before I, I i think i've had i had this against somebody i mean i actually had this against someone who did i have this against thing is i can play knight bd2 knight e4 a3 I'm not going to talk as much because this is this is pretty serious. Um, hmm. C3 is obviously a move, by the way. It's very obviously a move. Um, I think. I mean, I'm going to play this like a blitz game. I, normally, I probably wouldn't do this in a slow game, but eh, we'll see. I mean, I, I guess he can go that way too, but I, I assume he's going back to d6. Hmm, he goes to a5, and very, very interesting. Huh. So already, well, this is very, very weird. Um, This is already very weird. Which is kind of how I like it, actually. I like playing weird games. I like things that are a little bit off-center, off so... I can go bishop a3, bishop a3, knight e4, d7, knight fd2 maybe, two knight d6, I and mean, this is very, very weird. I can also play bishop b5 as well, which is kind of interesting too. I mean, a lot of, there's so many options here. I think I'm going to go bishop b5. Because now I can take and take the pawn and just castle. And this might not be good for me, but if it's not good for me, so be it. I think it's the right right approach, though, just to hit the pawn on e5. But very, very strange.
plays e4, which is also kind of surprising. I mean, I guess knight e4 has to be the right move. He goes bishop d7. Now, I can still play bishop a3 here, but I don't think it's right. Bishop c6 takes bishop a3. Knight g4. You can also just take and go bishop e2 in castles. Well, let's just do this. I assume we'll take with a pawn. Yeah, I'll go back to stop knight g4. Probably castles in c4. Strange position, but I think I'm doing okay here. Okay, so he castles, so I castle. I'm going to go c4, open the scope. Danger should be kind of out the window already here. Really shouldn't be in much danger in this position. Um, overall, I think I should be pretty happy with this position, objectively. I, I mean, I don't really know how good this is, but it feels like it should be pretty good. Um, the thing is, okay, I need to go C4. I can already go C4, but I don't like it. I can also play like Knight D2, maybe. I think I'm gonna play Rookie 1, maybe. I mean, C4 is definitely a move that I have to play at some point. It's just a question of when do I do it more than anything else. I'm pretty happy, though. I think I think this is more or less what I want out of the opening, more or less. Uh, but here, knight to d2 <laughs> happened. And Darren, that's an interesting moment. When we went back to the analysis board, it was about even. Now, after knight d2, it's saying that black once again is better. So c4 immediately, for some reason, was uh, needed to be played. And then white would have been closer to level. Well, I think one of the issues, perhaps, with knight d2 is that after c4, the knight is sort of neither here nor there, right? It, it's, it's sort of in the way. And not only is it pressured by the bishop, but it's preventing in some cases, the queen for moving up to d4. Uh, and it, it, you would like the knight to get to d4 somehow, but you can't play both c4 and b4. If you play b4, you send the bishop on a very dangerous square where Vidim might like to go there anyway, and you take a lot of the sting out of c4. So this actually still looks pretty pleasant for Vidim. Yes, and actually c4, there could even be bishop takes d2, not entirely out of the question, uh, trying to encourage a queen trade down the d file and then seizing control of that open lane but right now hikaru thinking that may mean he's not going to play c4 but if white doesn't play c4 right now uh, how is black going to take advantage of the closed position well i think the idea of building a battery against white's king and white's king is not alone it's not that weak but after bishop c7 and queen d6 white already has to make a very serious weakness right but don't start with queen d6 because of knight c4. Ooh. That's, that's easy nasty. to miss. Yeah. Uh, the queen is loose on d6, and that would be a fork. And you play c5. I actually really like that move. That's an antidote to c4, which will now meet with d4. Oh, my goodness. And you know why I was not thinking about that? You look at a... We like pawn chains. We like pawns protecting yeah. one another. If c4 happens, I would like to capture back on d5 with a pawn. Now after c4, if white had a second turn, c takes d5, and that's a problem for black structure. But after c4, as you're pointing out, black has to move d5 to d4. It's all defended there, and that is terrible news for white. I think I'm just going to chuck a pawn. I'm just going to chuck a pawn here and play like knight b3 and play for the initiative. Probably this is wrong, but... How bad can this really be? I mean, I, I also have bishop b5, but I think I go here. I have bishop b5, I have knight d4. I'm down a pawn, which of course is not what I want, obviously. But at the same time, I get an output, so I have an open file. I suspect bishop b5 was better. Just uh, my, my intuition tells me that. But I'm actually not sure how bad this really is. So he goes bishop d6. Ah, because now if I go bishop b5, he has a he has bishop h2. That's the problem. I guess. 
But I can Tango King G. Oh, that's. Wait, no, if I go Bishop B5, he's also got Knight G4. So what, what am I doing? No, that's actually terrible. <laughs> um, Queen D4 is a move as well. Queen D4. Hmm. Doesn't look quite right, actually, the more I look at this. Hmm. Rook c6, maybe? To play bishop. Actually, rook c6 makes quite a bit of sense because now I'm threatening bishop f6 and the bishop hangs. Hmm. Dr. Hattie just subscribed. Hi there. Good luck today. See what he does here. Not so easy to play for black, honestly. Okay, so he does play queen b8. So he actually, he's willing to give me this... Um, He's willing to give me this. Interesting. I mean, I guess I'll take, of course. Yeah, let's take. Let's go. I guess I'll play G3. I don't... Oh, did I just blunder something? Position is now definitely not balanced. Black's up a pawn, but with a less safe king. Black has the bishop pair, but that bishop on E6 is really just a defensive piece for now. Which side would you take here? I would take white. I would take white. I agree but on the other hand if black can get a lot of pieces off the board if black can get a pair of rooks and the queens off the board park this bishop on e5 and disarm the possibility of knight d4 and we could start talking about you know even black uh being better there so hikaru has to be very insistent on keeping a lot of pieces on the board which is exactly what he's doing with his last move rook a6 but the evil bar not approving of it so let's see what he does Objectively, I'm pretty happy with this, I think. I mean, I'm down a pawn, but it's very tricky to play for black with the open king side. Let's see what he does. Actually, just to avoid any kind of mouse slip, I'll just I'll just clear everything off. Yeah, actually, the more I look at this position, the less convinced I become that the white is or the black is actually better here. I mean, it's obviously not like special or anything, but I I'm not convinced that that I'm even much worse. I thought initially I was quite a bit worse, but now I don't think so. It's just a question of what the move is. Knight a5 is an interesting move here. Um, knight a5 kind of takes away a lot of squares potentially with knight c6 lurking. I actually kind of like knight a5. Let me see. Knight a5 d4 takes. Let me think for a second. Knight a5. C3, knight c6. Can be 7. Doesn't look right. Bishop g4 to force f5, bishop h3. Queen b7, rook a5. I mean, I guess that's fine. I don't I don't love this, but I think it's okay. So I'm gonna go bishop h3 and queen h5. Still very tricky. I, I kind of like my position though, the more I look at this. I mean, I, I go here. Now I have queen h5. I mean, either black has some way where he's just much better here, or I'm pretty... I'm doing pretty well otherwise. With well, opposite color bishops, like, even if somehow I trade the knight for the bishop, I don't think I can be losing here. Why is rook c4? 
That looks weird to me for some reason. It doesn't look right. Um, hmm. Queen H5, Queen C8. Nelly Cruz hmm. just subscribed. Okay, let's go here. Seems like a reasonable move. Queen C8, I go here. And now it's like that infuriating sensation and the volume is at 100, but it's still quiet. White cannot really increase the pressure as you indicated, but now Hikaru picking on the D5 funnel. Wait, Rook takes D5. Oh my God, Rook takes D5. Oh. He, he walked right into, wait, Bishop D5, Bishop F5, Queen G8, and Bishop H7? Mm. Is that the tactic? Yeah, that looks that looks oh available. Oh my lands. Should I show this? Yes. Takes, takes, takes. Now it looks like black defends with queen g8. Black's up a full rook. Whoop! Bishop h7. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. And, and he doesn't see it. And, and it's take everything. It's just two pawns and a knight for rook, and black has a terrible king. So that was a missed tactical opportunity uh for Hikar. He plays rook but to he's D1. Still better. He yeah, because he's, he's just completely gonna, underestimated the danger here. He's just gonna take on D5. So instead of King to H8, I wonder what he should have started with because uh Rook D1 is gonna be an option, it seems anyway. So maybe hmm. get the rook off of A5 at all costs, I think. Ah, so Bishop C3. Get it out of there. So you don't have to worry about the constant problem of the sacrifice on D5 and now that it's gonna lose. I mean, I don't know what's going on here, but this fills objectively with no time on the clock, like black should be in trouble. This feels kind of hard to play. I'm trying to think about what he can do here. Again, I think black is probably okay somehow, but it feels brutally scary to play. Well, especially with like one minute and counting on the clock. Okay, so he does go bishop c3. So he basically he asks me to sack my exchange. And I think I'm gonna oblige him probably. I don't know. If it's no good, it's no good, but I don't know. It seems like the way to play this. I mean, I've got one pawn. I've got, what, a knight and a pawn for the rook. All these weak pawns. No time, and I... I mean, he's got no time, and I have an attack. It seems very hard to believe this isn't just very, very good for me. I don't even know what he's supposed to do here, actually. This looks terrible. He goes queen g7, which I think is a blunder because of knight c5, knight e4. But again, I don't want to rush the moves. I also have rook d7. Doesn't look right. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's just go here. Target the pawn. Yeah, queen g7 is a big mistake because now rook e8 doesn't guard the pawn either. take goes there I mean I have rook d7 he has to go rook e8 does knight d6 win here okay again I've got three minutes so this is where I need to play knight d6 rook h4 queen f7 queen a1 king g2 is knight d6 Ah, uh, rook h4, knight e8, queen a1, queen d1. So knight d6, bishop d6, rook f7, queen a1, king g2. Rook c1, king g2. Knight d6, rook h4, 
Queen F7, trade, trade, King G8, GH4. That has to be winning. Queen A1, King G2. Has to be winning. Knight D6, Bishop D6, Rook F7, Rook C1, King G2, Rook G1 takes is winning. Queen A1. Mate. And another thing about yeah, that's hard about playing wins. with those kinds of advantages, right? You know you're better, but you've got such a vast menu of options. Oh! What? Wait. What? Rook H. Oh, oh my oh, gosh! What a move! I did it! Oh my god, he's just turned it around! Oh my, what an unexpected move! Oh my god, I completely missed that. I didn't that didn't even occur to me in my and, wildest dreams. And it's losing now because you, your queen oh can't move without lands. losing the rook on f7. That's unbelievable. And you couldn't take it with a pawn because of the pin. And now Vidit is up a rook and he should be able to win this game. Oh my god. Hikaru now recover with three pawns for the rook. And there's increment. So that's huge for Vidit. You got 14 seconds. He can just put all his pieces in dark squares. Queen g7, rook f8. You know, the bishop's going to obviously stay in a dark square because it can't leave it. But now Vidit should not have any real danger in his position. But I go king g2 and it's just, I think it's just mate. <gasps> oh my god, I just blundered. Oh my fudge. I just, oh my gosh. Did I really just do that? I mean, I play such a great game that I throw it like this. Unbelievable. I mean, I play such a great game to throw. Han Molo 7 just took $5 out of Bezos's pocket. I mean, I have all the time in the world and I don't see Rook H4. Queen of seven. Go, Bishop oh, no, Queen of seven. What Nikaru is doing? Bishop A1. Bishop H7. He doesn't see what to do. He goes Bishop C3 escaping. Yeah. Bishop E1 the threat? Uh-oh. How did that happen? I can't get over it. Oh, my goodness. This is unreal. Rook H4 with no <laughs> time on the clock. Where oh, did my. that come from? Queen F6. And I mean, you might have to play F4 at some point for white, but that's not a pleasant move to play either. Hikaru immediately switching to recovery mode. He's holding strong for the time being. Yes, and Queen G4 this Bishop E1. So that Queen needs to stop Bishop E1. This is not easy to win, though. As long as White can keep Black's pieces away from the back rank, Black's King is always going to be in trouble. Two, Two seconds, seconds for move. move. Oh, oh my God, gosh. he's really cutting it close. And I wonder if Vidit would be okay with the draw, but I, no, he, he can't be. He's up a rook for a no, few points. No, not at he, this point. He's maybe get the Bishop back to B6, but. Are you really prepping a sacrifice on e3? I don't think so. Uh, I think Should he's getting queen e1, maybe. Oh my goodness, that then queen b2, then bishop c3, queen c2, then queen e2. Oh, he forced the queens off. That's unbelievable. And Vidit, he has to spend every second that Ikaru is thinking to calculate these lines. Queen a1, go, queen go, e1. go, queen a1. Okay, oh, he, he missed he, it. He drops back. Understandable. Still good. Rook e8, he's just trying, he's gonna probably put his rook on e7 to free up his queen. Or he's repeating moves to gain a little bit of time. Not yeah. much, but something. He is cutting down this time deficit. Rook e7. Okay, you gotta move. Two, one, one second. Oh, my lands. I don't, I don't like this for, for me. It like makes me nervous. I'm not even playing. For our, for our hearts. Yeah. Oh my God. And anytime the h7 pawn is exposed <laughs> like this, that's when I start getting nervous. Ikara will find a way. He goes back to f3 with his bishop. Vidit has made zero progress. Yeah, absolutely none. Zero. And it's hard. I mean, it's very hard to make progress here. Hikaru is so solid. Yes. But he's got to keep trying. Bishop dc. He's making small little moves here, is Vidit. Okay, bishop e5 back in front of the diagonal. Maybe go a5 to Ooh. avoid repetition problems. Yes, that's a good idea at some point, but he wants his rook coming down to d2. Bishop c3. Can you go rook d2 now? I think it was time. Bishop c3 is weird. That exposes his backside. Hikaru infiltrating. And rook back to f8, so the queen can't take a7. Queen back to e4. a5. a5, there there's is. your, yep, there's your bishop e1, maybe? Uh -oh. There it is. And queen e4, queen b2. Is Hikaru and Zugzwang? I... Oh my god. A g4? He goes okay. to h4, but now h6. Yeah. And h5, and then? Just like, 
Vida needs a waiting move, but he doesn't <laughs> have one. Maybe Rook F7. So and then queen. King G7, just get your king out of there. Rook F7. Oh my goodness. Queen D5, though. King G7? Yep. And then Queen V2. He's almost ready to play. Check by Hikaru. He wants to check on G4. Yes, that's annoying. Hikaru do How everything he can. Holding this? And, you know, don't take your eye to H7 square, because at some point, Bishop E4 will be a problem. Not now, because F2 is hanging with check. I think he's paving the way for Queen B2. But then Queen, Queen G6. Oh, my goodness. Hikaru is just... Gosh. Not letting him infiltrate. No, but the time deficit, you pointed it out earlier, it's been brought down almost completely. Yes. And it's, it's obviously harder for Hikaru to play this position. He's down a rook. Of course. But careful about repetition. Bit it, cutting it very, very close. I feel like this is a two-time repetition. Yeah, Queen F5. Okay, he's got the dark swords oh. covered. Bishop G7. G6 attacking H7, H6. How is he going to get his rook in the game? I would play Queen C2. I would go start with that move. Oh, and he does so. And A4 is hanging. Let's not forget about that. Uh-oh. Hikaru defends it. Rook B8? Ah, oh, but there's oh, no... You can't, but One you can't... Second. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And he could think about Rook takes F3, but I don't think that's winning. And he's oh. back to home base here, but Queen D1, he's got Hikaru on his back foot now as he infiltrates with his Rook. Oh, and Queen... Oh, oh, my, oh my gosh. God, so <laughs> close. Oh, my goodness. Queen D7? That rook was the only move. He goes here. Rook F... Bishop C3, Bishop C3 but then he exposes his backside. That's Yo, two seconds! Two seconds! Two seconds! <laughs> oh, my gosh. Time repetition? I don't know. I guess not. One second again! Was it move? Oh, my gosh! B8, Rook B2. Queen C7. Where is he going to get in from? I think he should make a draw. I mean, oh, he's got to get so close. Rook B8. Rook B8. Oh, my he gosh. A chance to get to B2. Rook B8. Queen B4. B4. Okay, well, Queen C6 again. Then Queen D2. Down to 14 seconds. Watch out for Bishop B4. G6. Watch oh out for Bishop God. B4. Bishop. Oh, King my God. King G8. King G8. Oh, my gosh. It's a draw. King... No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Wait. Oh, my God. He's, he's running. Wait for the win. Rook F8. No, the queen e6. King d8. Oh my gosh. Bishop c6. <laughs> this is the craziest goodness. game. This is the nuttiest game I've ever seen. Queen e7, maybe? Bishop e5. Okay, he plays it. All hands on deck for Vidit. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Whoa, and but he gave up Queen e6. 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 What? What was oh, that? Queen e2. He's taking the bishop. Oh, okay. Check on d1. Oh, that was a bad move by Vidit. He should have taken... He should have checked on d1. I'm like... Halfway back in my chair. Yeah, he, he doesn't know what to do. I mean, it's such a hard position. King D7. Go back with us. One second. Oh my god. Move your king. Move. Move your king. Make a draw. He can't the window. Queen G4. Okay, Queen C4. Oh my god. Queen A2. Queen back to D5 is going. But he can't will play King F3 and then Queen E4, I think. Okay, Queen A1. You're protecting everything. Oh my god. Don't go Queen E. King H3, though. King D6. Can you can black play for a win somehow? King D6, well, run to the... Either side. King F3, though, I thought. And it's oh, my goodness. I mean, I drew the game, but, man, that was such an easy win. Okay, whatever. Whatever. Let me reset. There's nothing more upsetting than throwing a winning game. I mean, I mean, at least I drew it from the loss. Position. Okay, let's go, Blitz. I don't know who's supposed to feel worse. I mean, I assume I should feel worse than, than him, but, man, I just missed Rook H4. Hmm. <laughs> Play such a brilliant game to throw with 96. Oh my god. I mean anything except 96. But whatever. It's a draw. It's a draw. Still not that bad. It's now blitz. I'm not gonna talk again. Sorry, you guys. But a new lease on life for the Indian Grandmaster. And now a three plus one game to decide oh. the winner of this epic match. And if it did, you didn't make his first move for a few seconds, that probably won't. Uh, you know, be that big of a deal, but uh, you know, to be vigilant for these things. D5, and he's going for Catalan a la Anishkiri against Parham. Vidalent, Vidalent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> this is unbelievable. And D5 again by Hikaru, mm -hmm. his patented Catalan setup. I actually really like this in terms of a blitz game from the white perspective because I think that, um, you know, at best, black equalizes in these type of positions. There's no real tactical concerns from White's perspective. Right. And both sides blitzing out a line that Hikaru played against Fedeseev, I remember, a couple of weeks ago. Vidit the first to take a think. 
Mm -hmm. This is very Charlie Robert. We might have a bullet game <laughs> before we know it. Yeah, so this is the game I had against Dubov, by the way. This is the game I had against Dubov in Title Tuesday. And this position I remember was played in uh, the Grand Prix, the Fiddy Grand Prix by Oparin and Fedoseev. So this has been a very popular line in the highest levels of chess. And if you look at the position, Diane, the bishop on d5, it's a little awkward. Like, wait, would you really want to give up that bishop for a knight? And right. the answer is there aren't that many pieces remaining. Black's very active in this position. That knight on b8 is about to develop. So he does take this piece. And how do you take back? Well, normally you take back with a knight. The problem with taking back with a pawn, which I think would tempt a lot of people, is that that would create other weak squares like f5. Hikaru taking with the knight, hitting white's bishop. Mm -hmm. And maybe you just drop it back to d2 and secure the bishop pair. I don't know. I really should be happier. I mean, I was complete. I was actually losing there probably, but for some reason I'm just fairly, I'm just pretty despondent about it. Cause it's just so upsetting to throw a game like that. I mean, to play a brilliant game and then throw it is just like the worst feeling in the world. What now? C1. Yeah. The knight creeps over to B6. Hikaru still over three minutes. That's a big deal here. Yeah, Hikaru just knows these positions inside and out and whatever slight advantage White hopes to have here, it doesn't look like enough to play for more than a half point. And the time control is three plus two, so you still have a two second increment, but that might not matter if you get too far behind on the clock. I mean, I had all the time in the world in that game. Just all the time in the world. Oh, it's frustrating. Okay, it's knight d4, which is his idea. I get it. Um, knight b4 to d3 is what immediately comes to mind, but there's queen a4 ideas with the knight in d7 being loose. Uh, both sides need to be careful here. And white's not really risking here, because anytime you want to bail out, you can kind of grab on b4, right? True. So very true. a good, a very practical choice by Vidit here to play into this line. And now it's Hikaru's turn to go into the tank. Will he play Bishop F6 maybe? Then I feel like Bishop invites E4, but E4 isn't that scary. Because when I see the Bishop there, I want to like push my pawn up the board, but now it goes to B4 as you're pointing out. So right. nothing there. Vidit hmm. continues to ponder his next move. Bishop F1 makes sense to me. Something like G4 could also be considered, but Hikaru could just respond with g6. I can play queen b6 and I should be able to draw, but I don't really want to make a draw here, so I kind of want to go for more, which is I mean, a little bit risky maybe, but yeah, this might be risky, but I, I want to play for more. If I, if, I, if I go queen b6 takes and queen b2, it's just a dead draw. But I want to play for more because I'm up on the clock, and I, I mean, I assume he'll get nervous. I mean, he was very shaky at the end of last game, even with the winning position. Um, Everyone knows your track shack chess. Stick to panicking. Yeah, queen b one's a good move. Very good move, I think. Or wait, no, I have queen b five maybe. But then he has e four, yeah. So I don't want to do that. Just something like h six is a move. Um, E4 is just a problematic move. So I have to come up with a move here instead of just spazzing. Um, 5, E4, 7. F takes is no good. B3. <sighs> Stop spazzing and find a move. The clock beginning to equalize here. See Karu trying to play as accurately as possible in this very important moment. C3 also needs to be calculated. Although pawn takes C3. Knight takes C3 and then I guess and queen B3. Or I just take on C3 twice and B6 is loose. Oh, good call, good call. Bishop back Ooh. to E7, go C Karu. Okay, and E4 with Bishop Four. E3 to follow. That probably wins the C4 pawn. It does, and I think that's why Hikaru played Bishop E7. Maybe he's getting ready to repurpose his bishop to this diagonal to attack f2 uh, it's a good call and can you play like e4 and b3 type of stuff that's what i'm wondering as well oh, 95 i didn't 95 even look at that good oh 95 oh, is a great move. Pawn? wait a second the bishop was doing a really important job of stopping 95 so 95 i don't see a drawback 
95, but bit it, and he plays it. Oh, he's gosh. an amazing game, but he's got 42 seconds. But that, that pawn can't be defended, right? I don't see a way to defend it. I mean, C3, Jakar tries it. to give it away on his terms. Take with the pawn. You could take with the bishop as well. It looks like you're hanging your knight on e5, uh, but after bishop c3, knight c3, pawn takes queen e5, queen, the b6 knight was hanging. So he just but takes with the pawn. why not keep the two bishops? I'm with you. I completely agree. And now knight where? Got to make a decision. He's now under half a minute. Yeah, too low on the clock against Sakara Nakamura. He's cutting it way too close. He's down to 18 seconds. He can't, he's frozen. I actually checked his I checked his camera to make sure he wasn't actually frozen because <laughs> Parham part two would not be good when you have 50 right. seconds. Especially not now. He's up upon, he is in the driver's seat, but not on the clock. And Hikaru has activated his knights. And you know that it's nervous and knight takes E3 at some moment. Like if you're not really careful, that shot happens, your king gets exposed. Knight B6. Goes knight DB6 to supporting the knight on C4, trying to clog up that c pawn as much as possible bit at activating his queen great move queen oh i don't like e5 because the light squares it gives control of to the light square bishop bishop h3 oh, now is possible. one oh, i like Getting that a lot active mm -hmm. 12 seconds for vidit one minute for hikaru as he goes back to d6 queen b3 all right then the other knight's turn to come uh, to d4 and rook b8 is about to happen uh-oh and he's not moving he's got to go Five seconds oh knight d2 knight's great move yeah, because rook b8 is queen a4. No, then there's knight b2. So where's that queen going? c2, I guess, but then rook b2? And then I guess the queen just keeps moving away, and d2 is defended a million times. But it's not really risking, but anything can happen in this time pressure. Hikaru now dropping on the clock as well. And where can Hikaru go besides rook, knight a5 is possible? Just keep more pieces on the board? Rook B8, Does okay. Rook B8, now it's so easy to miss this fork, but bit it remains on top. Queen, mm -hmm. Queen C2. And if Rook B2, then Queen C1, and that Rook is loose there on uh -oh. the B2 square. So you have to be very careful right now for your car. Although you could move it back to B8 there. So it's not the end of the world as he decides to trade on D2. C4, oh, anybody? C4, C4. Rook Push B2, it. though. Uh, rook B2, Queen C1. And if you play Rook C8, there's still C5. And now Rook B1, I think. Because you oh, can't gosh. take on C4 at the end of the line. And he finds that too. That's Bishop really. B4. Bishop B4. Oh my goodness, C5. Oh, Haru's finger is starting to slip away from the ledge. And he's up two pawns now. And a very safe king for white. And that, that bishop gets to D5. Watch out for the black king. Oh my god, I'm literally trying. I'm doing my best job of throwing today. And the possibility of playing quickly. Hikaru with no clear way to set threats. He's got to pull off another miracle comeback here. And Bishop H3 to E6 is another threat. The Rook on B7, very dangerous. H4 could be thrown in, although that could backfire four seconds. Queen D5, he just, he's playing this simply. He's like, I don't want to be any dangerous. Trade queens, I'm up two pawns. If I don't win, it's going to be a miracle save for Hikaru. But F4 Bishop is H3, available. Bishop H3, Bishop E6. <sighs> Okay, but rook c7? How? No, that has to be good for white. That has to be winning. Rook c1 check by Hikaru. King back to f8. Okay, f4? Is it and time? e4? But I rook's... think he's got to do it. He was bishop d7. He just wants the bishop on the other side. Okay, f... so if he repositions his... But look at Hikaru activating his rook. Ooh, I don't know if I love that move at all. Because just... f2 is now very weak. And he took bishop away... h2. He took away his possibility of even playing f4. Oh, Vid is starting to choke this. King f3 and then rook b1. Allow Bishop H2 and play Rook back to B1. Bishop back to A4. Oh, oh what a tricky rook move. F no, but does that work? He'll let Bishop B3 first. Hikaru, though, Bishop D6, he's got the blockade going. Okay, Rook oh, B5, Bishop so B3 tricky. still. And look at Hikaru's clock, by the way, down to 12 seconds now. Bishop back to E5. Bishop C5. King F3, King, King F3. F3. That's a got big it. opportunity. It is. And now, how does he make Bishop, B, Bishop B3, Rook B2. Oh, Bishop E1 is coming, but, but that's D6. Or Bishop E, uh, D6 is a really big move. Bishop uh -oh. E2 is defensive, but D6 is going for a new queen. Bishop D3. Clinging to that Bishop right against coattails, Rook D2. And I wonder if he should go- the E file. I was wondering if he should try King E4 and D6, but he's- oh. Whoa, that's a committal decision, but now he's going to have weaknesses on the dark squares. King E3, okay, so King E7. E Oh, he's losing the he's, thread here. He's completely lost the bishop e5, and Hikaru's got the blockade. He's gonna yeah, draw. Complete blockade. Nothing that on, you can even do. This is simply unbelievable. And rook d2 back, make sure no d6. Vidit's gonna keep trying, but don't get mated here after bishop d4. <laughs> and it's a draw. 
Unbelievable. Un and look at Vidit. He's like, what more he do I need to get so in the game? so devastated. It's two in a row. And that Rook up position was understandable. Hikaru is a freaking magician. I mean, this is <laughs> insane. And they're up to the bullet game. Here we go. Huh. Oh, my gosh. Another draw. Mm. Terrible game. But, okay, let's go. This is one plus one. Played it too prematurely. Played this. There's too much simplification too early in the game here. Go here. I've got to do something on the king's side. I just have to move. I'm just being way too slow. I'm just, I'm not actually coming up with ideas here. Next. His knight's a little bit boxed here. Ah, he's got e4, which I also missed. Shoot. Again, I'm just missing every freaking move today. It's unbelievable. Oh, I've got a mate idea. Wait. Wait, I've got a mate idea. Wait. There's a win. There we go. There we go. Oh my God. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Okay. There we go. We get the win. Oh, oh, holy. I'm getting too old for this game. I'm getting too old for this game. Jeez.